Hey guys, today I am going to put the senders in it for the temperature and the oil pressure. This is the oil, the oil pressure one's over here. Um, there's also another one on the back of the block. Um, what, what I'm doing is I'm using these ICT they're adapters so that you can adapt your old oil pressure and temperature senders to this block because they're not the same thread, they're metric. Old ones are uh, standard SAE. So um, what they basically are is I bought a kit. It comes with a whole bunch of different kinds. I just bought the whole big kit because it's what I thought I needed because I haven't done this and it comes with six different units. But I'm not using these four I found out. So um, the ones I am using is there's this one and this is for the oil pressure and that goes on the back of the block right here. Um, this one, this one here is the number, just so you guys have it, if, if you want to add these exact same ones, because it's a fine thread, it's, it's smaller, it goes with this style, well, let me set it down. This style sending unit, and also this style here, which is uh, a light type style. Um, so this number is a 551172. It is an M16 to a 1.5 adapter to 3.8 NPT. So if that helps you out. Um, so the other one is this is your temperature sender. Goes in the side of the block here. I have the stock one on this side but I think I'm gonna put this one over here on this side. Uh, the heads are exactly the same, they're just flip-flopped. So I'm going to put this over here, and this will be my sender for my temperature gauge. And I'll leave this one because I need it for the harness. Um, and that way I can monitor the engine through the computer also. So that's what I'm doing with this one. And that number is uh, five five one one seven nine. Oh, it's rubbed off. It looks like a one. And this is an M twelve dash one point five adapter to a three. Well, three eighths. <laughs> that's rubbed off too. But that's that I C T Bellet adapter. Um, comes with a whole kit if you need everything. But if you're doing what I'm doing here, then you probably just need these two. Um, so what I have here, I could use Teflon tape, but I'm gonna use this, this liquid Teflon tape. And I like the Teflon tape everything, but today this is, this is definitely a mess. I'm gonna use a liquid today. So I'm just gonna slightly paint threads. Not gunk it on like what's happening here. It's kinda gunked up, but let me just use my finger. Nice stuff about this is it's, it's kind of expandable. I mean it's it cleans its well it's the thing about this is it seals and continues sealing um, and it kind of hardens up a little bit and I don't know if it's the right stuff to use because some people don't like it but I'm gonna use it so I got a rag um, so I'm gonna put this in the block um, got that on I got a 22 millimeter socket these are aluminum I would be careful tightening them up too much so um, I don't know I can put a torque value to it but I'm just gonna do what feels right <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good so what I did 
so let's let's kind of chat about this a little bit. So this is the original oil pressure sender. What I ended up doing, because I want to run two, is this come off my small block Chevy. It's just an adapter. It originally come off this 350 that was in this truck. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one sender on this side and I'm going to put the computer's sender on the other, just like that. And I'm going to run both, just like so. That way I have both. Um, if you guys don't like it, give me your comments, let me know what you think. But that is what I'm doing right now. Like I said, um, this is my first time doing an LS. I, I'm learning. Um, I have plenty more to learn, but uh, we'll see and I'll, I'll learn from what I've done here. But I'm going to use some more of this. And this one actually had this on it originally. I had to clean it off. So. And I'm just going to kind of smooth this out a little bit. sure I don't get any on the inside because that's going to plug up my sender. Wipe off the excess. It's not on the threads. So then here I'm just going to put this guy in just like so. I can't put the senders on it yet because they will just that you want this won't go in as easy because you're going to hit the manifold. Maybe if you didn't have the manifold on, you could probably get away with it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have plenty of room on the back of this block, but I may try to stagger them a little bit. Um, I don't think that's going to work. It's going to have to make a hole. Revolution. But then I got the large one here. And I don't know. Let's just play around. Maybe this one can sit right here. And I think that might be the sweet spot because then this guy can sit right here and it doesn't hang out nearly as far. I'm going to put this one on. I am not going to put this one on right now. I will put that one on when it's in the vehicle because I don't want to break it off when I'm installing this motor and I don't want any more hassles getting these bolts. But this one I think I'll put in now. It'll, uh, I think it'll help out a little bit, but I, I think this is a great location. Kind of hides this one a little bit also. So um, I'm going to put a little bit of this one had Teflon tape on it. Fill that off. I'm gonna put some of this on. And I got a little bit in the hole, so I'm gonna go get a, uh, my torch cleaning tips here. I'm just gonna stick one of these in there. And got it right out of there. So, I'm sure you could use anything on that. So then, I have the temperature sender. There is a bolt on this side that's plugging the hole. Here, let me let me show you. So I just have this uh, Allen key here. It's just a, a bolt, the Allen head, and it just needs to be removed. And then this guy goes right there, and that'll read the gauges in my K20 truck, the stock gauges. So I don't have to worry about changing gauges or doing anything. Um, but I do still want the computer to read the other one. And the reason why I think I'm putting this one on this side is because it'll be hidden in the back of the motor. This thing hangs out, you know, four inches. It's long, that adapter. Um, this side's not as much. That's the stock unit. Um, I figure 
you're most likely gonna bump this one off if it was there you're gonna break it off this one you won't I mean reaching around the motor or doing stuff you just never know I just didn't feel like it was a good idea so so but I will put those on the motor uh, a little later when it's installed but this kind of gives you an idea of what these adapters are and what you can do with them and how they kind of work because I've had some questions about those um, but if you like what I've done if you want to see more of this as I move along with other things uh, send a message you know make a comment uh, hit subscribe if you like it check out some of my other videos uh, I know I'm uh, probably making too many videos with this motor but uh, I didn't know some of this stuff and so I figured you guys might want to know um, I know it's kind of small little thing but I didn't know I had to do some research to figure this out um, there's this company has almost everything I found out later down the road but at first I didn't I didn't discover this company until I thought I was looking for the motor mounts and then I realized oh they have all kinds of stuff so pretty much everything I'm using to adapt is this ICT company and uh, the products seem good uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them so far, but uh, other people may have problems, but I'm, I'm happy. Uh, we'll see once we get this thing on the road, but hit subscribe again, but check it out. Uh, thanks guys, I appreciate it, and uh, the next video of this is going to go into that truck over there. Um, I'm going to first put the clutch and flywheel on, so if you guys are interested, Watch my next video, that'll be that part. Then the second video is gonna be dropping this baby in.